Coffee Break Collection 17. Health and Fitness. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Why do you use exercise? By David Hume, 1711 to 1776. From Essays and Treatises number five it appears evident that the ultimate ends of human actions can never in any case be accounted for by reason but recommend themselves entirely to the sentiments and affections of mankind without any dependence on the intellectual faculties ask a man why he uses exercise he will answer because he desires to keep his health if you then inquire why he desires health, he will readily reply, because sickness is painful. If you push your inquiries farther and desire a reason why he hates pain, it is impossible he can ever give any. This is an ultimate end, and is never referred to any other object. Perhaps to your second question, why he desires health, he may also reply that it is necessary for the exercise of his calling. If you ask why he is anxious on that head, he will answer, because he desires to get money. If you demand why, it is the instrument of pleasure, says he, and beyond this it is an absurdity to ask for a reason. It is impossible there can be a progress in infinitum and that one thing can always be a reason why another is desired. Something must be desirable on its own account, and because of its immediate accord or agreement with human sentiment and affection. Now, as virtue is an end, and is desirable on its own account, without fee or reward, merely for the immediate satisfaction which it conveys, it is requisite that there should be some sentiment which it touches, some internal taste or feeling or whatever you please to call it which distinguishes moral good and evil and which embraces the one and rejects the other thus the distinct boundaries and offices of reason and of taste are easily ascertained the former conveys the knowledge of truth and falsehood the latter gives the sentiment of beauty and deformity vice and virtue the one discovers objects as they really stand in nature without addition or diminution. The other has a productive faculty and gilding or staining all natural objects with the colors borrowed from internal sentiment raises in a manner a new creation. Reason being cool and disengaged is no motive to action and directs only the impulse received from appetite and inclination by showing us the means of attaining happiness or avoiding misery taste as it gives pleasure or pain and thereby constitutes happiness or misery becomes a motive to action and is the first spring or impulse to desire and volition from circumstances and relations known or supposed the former leads us to the discovery of the concealed and unknown after all circumstances and relations are laid before us the latter makes us feel from the whole a new sentiment of blame or approbation the standard of the one being founded on the nature of things is eternal and inflexible even by the will of the supreme being the standard of the other rising from the internal frame and constitution of animals is ultimately derived from that supreme will which bestowed on each being its peculiar nature and arranged the several classes and orders of existence end of why do you use exercise by david hume 1711-1776